Now knowing who we are, got us groping at noonday Working on the fives, got us groping at noonday The food all the foul, got us groping at noonday Feed your spirit, turn your radio at noonday The laws that shit on the buckler get you ready for doomsday Sack me in the midst of the valley We smoke since foes like Cali Another black man dead, so that's another tally Don't get caught in the alley, cause they smoking I pack them guns, cop back We teaching on the corners where they cop back They try to kill our brothers, so with them scriptures we shot back Purple and gold across the globe you can't top that black man in unity This verse is my eulogy The kingdom for people who never had an opportunity Twelve gates for the twelve tribes We rule the people that oppress us Yeah, I know you feel the vibe Better choose a side Don't wanna repent because the pride indoctrinated us Our brother Esau, he really hated us On the shores of Africa, the white man invaded us Brown and Khan friends, they raided us no, I'm gonna tell you this right here, right now, right now I love what y'all doing Love it That's good very good. Very good. Uh -huh. And I do it on my own. Uh-huh. It's seven you brothers. Uh -huh. Well, by my yeah. 14, 13, because like you said, bro, you said you teach your family, right? Yeah. You teach your family. And that's a good thing to teach your family. That's what more black men need to do. We need to build strong families, but guess what? There's something that you have to do after you teach your family. I want you to listen to this. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 13. Uh -huh. Now therefore, set thine house in order. Just like you said, the Bible says to set your house in order. But brother, wait, 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 wait. Listen, listen, set your house in order. That's what you're trying to do. But guess what? The Bible also says this, read. And reprove thy people. Once you set your house in order, God, Christ commands you to come out here to reprove your people. What does it mean to reprove? That means to correct your people. Black men are not standing up in the black community correcting the young brothers. That's why we got gun violence. That's why we got drug dealing in our community. We need more black men to stand up. And not take the politicians or the police to come out here. You, but what are you teaching them? What do you what must you teach them? I am teaching them. But what are you teaching them? I'm teaching them the righteous way. What is the righteous way? And do as he done. Uh -huh. And do as our black people did. Uh -huh. And do as our grandmothers uh -huh. and our grandfathers. And we lost a lot. And we losing a lot. That's what I teach So them. you said you teach them righteousness, right? right? What is righteousness? Hey, sis, what we teaching is blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we make up the 12 tribes of Israel. And that's during the time of slavery, this is what they did. They divide and conquered us. Okay. Blacks and Hispanics are the I same people. You said. Right. Guess what? I am Cherokee Nation. All praise to the most high. All praise. All praise. All praise. But remember, you said you teach them righteousness, right? So let's see what God says. What is righteousness? I want you to listen. Read what you got. Deuteronomy 6, 25, and it shall be our righteousness. So the Bible says this is going to be our righteousness, read. If we observe to do all these commandments. That we do what? All these commandments. So what we must be teaching our families is the commandments, right? The commandments of God. So my brother, what's your name again, brother? What's your name again? They call me Man J. Man J, come here, come here. So let me ask you, what is today? Because the Bible says righteousness is, is teaching the commandments. What is today? What Saturday. is today? What is special about Saturday, according to the Bible? I learned a lot right here with y'all. Okay, so let me show you right quick. I'm going to show you two more scriptures before you leave. Because you might not know this. And it's not your fault because guess what? We went through 400 years of slavery. And guess what? During the time of slavery. It's more than that. It's more than that. It ain't 400. How many years? Five. Five. I agree with you 100%. But guess what? This man taught us the Bible. So, man, Jay, so guess what? What is today? Give me that the Sabbath day. Let's see what today is. I want you to listen. Read. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. So, God is telling us to remember the Sabbath day. That's what? That's today, right? Not us. Uh huh. You said what? is what they made up, not us. No, no. Sunday is what they made up. This man, he taught he our people, Saturday. he taught our I people to go to church on Sunday. Okay. He made Saturday. But God says what? He said what day? He said Saturday, right? So the Saturday is the Sabbath day. So my brother, how do we keep it holy? How do we, I want you to educate me as an older brother that's teaching the youth. How do we keep the Sabbath day holy? 
I'll tell you what's going on, man. Say it. If you really want to know. Uh huh. That's drugs. Say it again. Prostitution. Trafficking. Human trafficking. Kids. This. That. Yeah. And things in that nature. Uh huh. That's what's happening in the country. But why? But why is they won't give us the money that we properly zone, we properly deserve, and everything in that nature? I understand what you're saying, but guess but what? But some of them use it in a different the respect. The brought, he brought out a scripture. Why are we always, because guess what? We've been taught to depend on a white man for everything, for food stamps, for money. money. We want reparations, but guess what? It's reparations. <laughs> Is reparations gonna fix what they did to our to our families? How they broke up the black family? Is reparations gonna fix how they got our babies and they dashed them to stones and they fed our babies to alligators? Reparation is not going to change that, brother. So guess what? We always want to go to the other nations for reparations, but guess what? Give me Zephaniah 2 and 1 again. Why do we need reparations when you, me, him, black men could come together with our own money and we could build our own communities. We could build our own education system. We can do it without the so-called white man. We have to change the mindset, but that's what, brother? That's what he was telling you. The Sabbath that we are commanded to come together as a nation of people. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are a nation of people. That is right. Okay. Look at this right here, right now, what I'm finna say. Look at how many times black brothers that you trusted. Uh huh. Brother, you was in the street selling drugs and this and that and the other, and you turn around and you did your brother like this. I, I agree with you 100%. But I guess what, Brother Jay? But guess what? What does the Bible say about that, Brother Jay? Because the answer's in the Bible. Hold on. Give me some rock six and seven. Right what does up. the Bible say about it, Brother Jay? Because a lot of times when these different black men join organizations, he has a different mind. What can he do to join? Okay, all praises. He has a different mind. Come here, brother. I want you to understand. God commands us to be in the same mind. So before you can trust a brother, this is what the Bible tells you to do. I want you to listen. Listen. Read that. Sirach chapter 6, verse 7. Read. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. The Bible says you have to prove him first. You have to prove a friend. But how do you prove a friend? Give me Sirach 37 and 12. You get that? Yeah. Before you can just trust me, before you can trust him, trust him. The Bible says we have to prove each other. You get what I'm saying? So guess what? Before I can help you out, I have to know you. But this is how you prove a friend. Read what you got. Sirach chapter 37 verse 12. But be continually with a godly man. So when you choose a friend, what does the Bible says? To be continually with who? With who? What, what, what type of brother you supposed to be with? Read it one more time. But be continually with a godly man. The Bible says you're supposed to be continually with a godly man. So yeah, what is yeah. a godly man according to the Bible? Keep going. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments. So guess what? A godly man is somebody that keeps the commandments of the Lord. So guess what? A godly man is not going to stab you in the back. A godly man is going to keep the commandments of the Lord. Any more on that? Yeah. Keep going. Whose mind is according to thy mind. So a godly man, is his mind is according to your mind. Your mind is on the Bible. So he's saying, guess what? In these black organizations, they stab each other in the back. That's Give me right. Leviticus about hating your brother. That's so remember, right. a godly man does what? He keeps the commandments, right? This is the commandment of God right here. These commandments was only given to the 12 tribes of Israel. So guess what? If we want to come together, if we want to gather together, if we want to fix our community, we have to have the same mind. We have to keep the commandments of God. Apply it to your life. Teach your wife. Teach your kids. Teach your family. This is what we have to do. This is simple, right? This is simple. Read what you got. Leviticus 19, 17. No. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So this is the mind of a godly man. The Bible says, guess what? If you are a godly man, you're not supposed to hate your brother in your heart. But what do you see in the black community? You see black people hating on black people. Black people trying to kill other black people. What do you see on the news recently? We 
We got five police officers in Memphis, Tennessee. What did they do? They killed their own brother. They killed their own brother. This is why we need the commandments of God. We need law and order in the black neighborhood. We thought the police was law and order, but apparently it's not. God's commandments, this Bible is what gives us law and order. Read what you got again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So God says you're not supposed to hate your brother, but guess what? You're supposed to correct him. You're supposed to rebuke him. Love is correcting your brother. That's so he right. seeing you in air and correcting you like I'm about to do now. Guess what? That is love according to the That's Bible. Right. You yeah. might not never know this. Maybe first friend is Because you ask how can you join? Guess what? You this is how you join, by your actions. Give me that first. First Samuel 2 and 3. You believe in this Bible? You believe in this book? So if you believe in Christ, guess what? We have to keep the commandments of God. Yes, a lot right. of times, all people say they believe in God. But guess what? Do they do anything that's in this book? They do nothing that's in this book. They right boast with their mouth. Christians, right they boast with their mouth. They in the church sleeping with all types of people. They don't do the commandments of God. Yeah, right 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 right. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Yeah. Talking no more, so it's sitting proudly. So this is what God is telling us. What's your name? John. John, my name is Benai, bro. So God says, don't talk exceedingly proudly. Don't act like you know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Don't talk exceedingly proudly. Keep going. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. He said, don't let arrogancy come out your mouth. Because guess what? You have to have your words weighed in the balance. If you say something, you better do it. Keep going. No. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And it says God, the God of this Bible is the God of knowledge. Sure. You know what knowledge is? What is knowledge? What knowledge do no. you think he's talking about? He's a God of knowledge. What knowledge do you think he's talking about? No. Everything that's in the Bible. Give me that. You got that? Malachi. So guess what? The knowledge that he's talking about is, guess what? Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. When you look on this sign, look on this sign. See this sign? God, he gave his law, statutes, and commandments to only those people on the sign. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So read what you got. So remember, he said, God is a God of knowledge. Let's see what the knowledge is. Read. Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. Read. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So he said the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So when you go to the church, guess what? The pastor, what comes out of his mouth should be knowledge. That's the right. Bible's going to tell you what type of knowledge. That's keep right. going. And they should seek the law. The what? The law. The what? The law at his mouth. The Bible yeah. says they should seek the law out his mouth. So guess what? We need to come out here and teach our people what? God's law. Yes, That's right. what we must do. So now let's go back to 1 Samuel. Read what you got. 1 Samuel 2 and 3. Uh -huh. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Uh -huh. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Uh -huh. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. God is a God of knowledge. Meaning, guess what? The law, statutes, and commandments, the oracles of God. Keep going. And by him, actions are weighed. And by God, your actions is weighed. He's going to judge you by what? By your actions. You get what I'm saying? So now, give me first, um, first Corinthians 11. First Corinthians 11. You Wait, might not no. have heard this before. You get what I'm saying? So let's read what you got. First Corinthians 11 and 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So who is your head? Who's the man up there? Which man up there? Now I want you to read it one more time. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So who is the head of every bl black man? Who is your head? Christ, right? Keep going. And the head of the... But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. Who is the head of the woman? The man, the black man is supposed to be the head of his household. That's right. But in 2023, what do you see? Black women is the head of the household. Black women are trying to control men. But God says that's contrary to the Bible. That's right. You get what I'm saying? The man is supposed to be the head of the house. Keep going. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is what? Is God. Because in these Christian church, they teach the Trinity. They believe that God and Christ is the same person. But the Bible says what? And the head of Christ is God. So it said the head of Christ is who? God. They're two separate entities, right? Keep going. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. So the Bible says every man that prayed and prophesied having his head covered. Is your head covered right now? Do you have a covering on top of your head? 
You acknowledge that, right? So keep going. Read it one more time. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So who are you dishonoring by having your head covered right now? Or who's your head? Christ. So who are you dishonoring by having your head covered? You dishonoring Christ. So if you know that you dishonor Christ, what must you do? What must you do? Remember, it says, every man prayed the prophesy and having his head covered, he dishonoreth his head. So you're covering your head by what? Having your hood on. That's having right. your do-rag on. Right. So if you don't want to dishonor Christ, what must you do? Take it off. Give me something. So now, remember what we read. Your actions is going to be weighed. So what must you do? What action must you show if you believe in Christ? What should you do right now? Take it off. That's right. Take it That's off. Right. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. So, bro, this is how easy you got to take, the, take the, the do-rag off, too. But this is how easy, you get what I'm saying? It's not hard to keep the commandments of God. A lot of times in Christianity, they say you can't do everything that that book says to do. But it's that easy. Stop eating pork. Is that something hard? Stop eating crab, shrimp, lobster. That's not hard to do. Um, not covering your head. That's not, that's not something that's hard to do. You get what I'm saying? So now, remember... It said he's the God of knowledge. The knowledge is what? The law, statutes, and commandments, right? So was God, law, statutes, and commandments given to every race of people? What do you think? You think they were? So I want, I want you to acknowledge this right here. Who taught us the Bible? Remember, see that sign right there? During the time of slavery, who taught us the Bible? Bring it out, huh? Look at the signs. What do you see on the signs? You see a brother that got... They got beaten. See that sign? Who taught us the Bible at that time, bro? You said black people? What, was black people in subjection? Remember, this is slavery right here. So let's show you this first. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Let's see, how do we know that we Israelites? Because guess what? You're not African American. You're not black. Those are by words. That was given to us by our enemies. Before we came to America, was we calling ourselves African American? No. So now listen. Bible says, what you got? Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. God, he's talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. He said, if you disobey me, I'm going to put curses upon you. Are curses good or bad? Bad, right? Do you think black people be cursed as a people? You don't think we curse? Do you think us, look at you, look, look around, look, look around. When you go to Oakland Park, does it look like this? Do you see trash everywhere? Do you see people bugged out their minds? So do you think black people is cursed? I want you to think about our environment as black and Hispanic. What do we see on the day-to-day -day basis? Do you think that we curse? Because a lot of times, give me that in Jeremiah, what is that, about the food of thy thoughts? But I want you to see what God says, read what you got. Jeremiah 6, 19. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. So God, he's, talk, he's talking about a specific people. He said, I'm going to bring evil upon this people. Look at the signs. This is the evil that was brought upon God's people in the last days. Slavery. Like the brother that left here said, technically, yeah, we've been enslaved for over 500 years. This is the evil. Keep going. Behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts. God says he's going to bring evil upon the fruit of our thoughts. This is why we rationalize and we think that our living conditions is normal. There's nothing normal about having trash everywhere. It takes one second to throw the trash in the trash can, right? But guess what? The way we treat our communities is the same way that we treat ourselves. Bring it out. The same way that we treat our community is the same way that we treat our black women. You get what I'm saying? The fruit of our thoughts, guess what? It's cursed because we broke God's commandments. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Let's go to, um, so now remember, God says he's going to curse a certain people. So let's see who the people that he cursed. Give me verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in this city. God says, guess what? This people's going to be cursed in the city. When you go to America, who's in the hoods? If you go to any hood in America, I don't care, you go to California, Kansas City, Memphis, Tennessee, who is in the hoods? Who's, who's us? Black people. Who, who's, who's in the hood with black people? Bring it out. I want you to think about it. If you go to any hood, who is in the hood with black people? What people? 
just like here in Kansas City, right? We got on um, Prospect, but guess what? If you go down to Independence Avenue, you're gonna start seeing, ooh, and Hispanics, right? So every hood in America, guess what? You're gonna see blacks and Hispanics. Yeah. If you go to the hood in Wanda, guess what you're gonna see? It's a lot of Hispanics over there that live with the black people. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So God says, read that again. Cursed shall thou be in this city. God says his chosen people is going to be cursed in the city for breaking my commandments. Keep going. And cursed shall thou be in the field. And God says, guess what? You're going to be cursed in the field. Who, who was picking the cotton in the field? In, 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 in 1610, 1619, in the 1600s, in the 1700s, who was picking the cotton in the cotton fields? Look at the sign. That's your answer right there. Who was picking the, who was in the field working? Picking the sugar cane, the cotton, that was black people. You get what I'm saying? So God is letting you know, guess what? This is my chosen people. Have you ever seen white people picking cotton? Have you ever seen white people picking sugar cane? So apparently they don't fit this prophecy. You get what I'm saying? What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation 